Christ. For you who have your Bibles, and if you don't have a Bible, just write us and let us know. We will get you a Bible and have it sent to you. We're living in a time now that we ought to follow the Word of God, read it for ourselves. We have so many people that are deceiving and, is, and, and, and deceiving people to do things that not even according to the word of God. Our message today will be mask or mask of deception. I'm going to say it again. Our message this morning will be mask or mask of deception. Hallelujah. I know that 28, 1 through 11, Proverbs 28, 1 through 11 was read. But I want to read it from my Bible. Hallelujah. Praise God. I happen to love this version. The word of God is the word of God. But I just happen to like this translation. It's called the Life Application Bible, Study Bible. Amen. And the word reads as follows. Proverbs 28, verse 1 through 11. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as a lion. When there is more rot within the nation, its government topples easily, but wise and knowledgeable leaders bring stability. A poor person who oppresses the poor is like a pouring rain that destroys the crop. To reject the law is to praise the wicked. To obey the law is to fight them. Mm -hmm. Evil people don't understand justice, but those who follow the Lord understand completely. Yeah. Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and rich. Young people who obey the law are wise. Those wild friends bring shame to their parents. Income from charging high interest rates will end up in the pocket of someone who is kind to the poor. God detests prayers of a person who ignores the law. Those who lead good people along an evil path will fall into their own trap. Come on, first lady. But the honest will inherit good things. Yeah. Rich people may think they are wise, uh -huh. but a poor person with discernment can see right through them. Oh, now, Proverbs often compares the lifestyle of the wicked and the righteous and makes a strong case for living by God's pattern. The advantages of righteous living and the disadvantages of wicked living are pointed out. The kind of person we decide to be will affect every area of our lives. Now, in Solomon's day, kings posed acts of authority and were often considered to be like God. Yeah. Proverbs 21 shows that God has ultimate authority over world rulers. Although they may not have realized it, the earth's most powerful kings have always been under God's control. Read Isaiah 10 verses 5 through 8 for an example of a pagan king who was used for God's purposes. People may mistakenly think that they are doing right, but see motives of their hearts. We often have to make choices in areas where the right actions is difficult to discern. Sometimes we're going to have to make decisions that everybody just not going to like church. We can help ourselves make such decisions by trying to identify our motives first 
and then asking, would God be pleased with my real reason for doing this? And everything we do, we ought to ask God, is he pleased for what we are doing? Now, for a government or society to endure, it needs wise, informed leaders. And they are hard to find. Am I right about it? Each person's selfishness quickly affects others. A selfish employee who steals from the company ruins the productivity. A selfish driver who drinks before taking a wheel makes the state highways unsafe. A selfish spouse who has an adulterous affair often breaks up several families. When people live for themselves with little concern for how their actions affect others, the resulting moral rot contaminates the entire nation. Mass of deceptions are real and they are very dangerous. So, Sister Roy, what are some of the mass of deceptions? I'm glad you asked me. See, many of these masks, see, you can see masks, masks are used to cover something. Am I right about it? And then you have masks that may be inside the body that nobody wants to see, or masks that might be on the skin that may be your worst nightmare. Why? Because those types of masks most of the time end up being cancer. So let me tell you some of these masks that sometimes end up being cancerous within our bodies. I want you to know that God is not pleased with some of these masks that folk are walking around with. You have the physical mask, am I right about it? And then you have the invisible mask that you can't see. Yeah. One of the invisible masks, and let me tell you a few. Envy, uh, jealousy, well, malice, hatred, backstabbing, violent stripes, plotting evil against people, bribing, well, bullying, scheming, uh, and let's not forget about the most ignorant of them all, racism. Well, Am I right about it? You can take your time later on, and I invite you to. You ain't getting into heaven any kind of way. Am I right about it? Proverbs 11, 14 says, Without wise leadership, a nation falls. With many counselors, there is safety. Don't be fooled by the devil with a rich and a superior attitude, believing you are wonderful and depend on no one. Now, from the beginning, God said, I created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. By him, all things were made. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yeah. You, we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Uh -huh. Let me tell you about them. They take credit for all they do, uh -huh. but that's a hollow self-esteem. Yeah. Though depending on God in their struggles, let me tell you about the poor. The poor develop a richness of spirit that no amount of wealth can provide. Am I right about it? Because see, when you poor, that's what you know. You can begin to understand and praise God and pray to God that I need your help. I need your intervention right now. See, that's hard for a rich person to do. Why? That's why God says it's easy for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to make it into heaven. Am I right about it? Second Samuel 23, 3 says, he who rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of God and he shall be like a light 
of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without cloud, like a tender grass springing out of the earth by the clear shining after rain. It is human nature to hide sin. Am I right about it? It's human nature or overlook our mistakes. But let me tell you something. It is hard to learn from a mistake that you don't acknowledge has been made or you don't acknowledge that you are the guilty party. Am I right about it? What good is a mistake if it doesn't teach you anything or something? Am I right about it, y'all? It's called mass of deception. It's just like with this coronavirus. They told everybody to what? Stay away from large crowds or you may be infected with the coronavirus. But I want you to know that you can go to any big church you want to try to hide yourself. But if the Holy Ghost is there and the word of God is being preached, you gonna get infected. Infected by the Holy Ghost. Am I right about it? You can run up but you can't hide. See, everybody makes mistakes, but only a fool denies them and repeat them over and over again. Yeah. Beware of the mask of deception. Uh -huh. See, Colossians 2.15 says, And having the spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them yeah. in it. Uh -huh. Many people strongly resist admitting their wrongdoings. Oh, the Bible yeah. says they are fools. Uh -huh. It doesn't deem you weak admitting graciously your mistakes. Oh, yeah. It doesn't mean that you're weak if you say that I made a mistake. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, that makes you with a clean heart that you can readily say that I am not perfect. I made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs 21 1 says, choose a good reputation. How many of you know that it's good to have a good reputation over great riches for being held in high esteem? It's better than having silver and gold. I can hear somebody out there say, what? Uh -huh. Better than having silver and gold. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. The world leadership system is diff in difference greatly from the leadership in the kingdom of God. Yeah. See, worldly leaders uh -huh. are often selfish, arrogant, unsympathetic, and very defiant and often display a bullying spirit. No, no, no. Tell it. They display a bullying spirit. Why do they do that? Because they like to hide. Yeah. Anytime you have to be a bully to get some attention, you really need to run to Jesus. Well, Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, when you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than yourself. You need to watch out for the things that you do. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. We got to stop so caught up in a setup with our own self. Am I right about it? God wants us to identify with the injustices of others and not ignore the cries of the helpless and the needy. Those who open their eyes to the wrongs and injustices of this world will definitely be blessed. Hallelujah. I know somebody up there upset, but guess 
what? I'm so glad that God, even in my early life, allowed me to be able to be all right just being by myself. Because anytime I'm by myself, I can hear the voice of the Holy Ghost letting me know that I'm with you always. Always I am with you. Stand on the promises of God. Proverbs 12, 20 says, there is a deceit in the hearts of those who plot evil, but joy for those who promote peace. Mass of deception, y'all, they are lethal. Matter of fact, they are so lethal till they will kill you if you don't get rid of them. Hallelujah. Mass of deception, they are real. You can't see them, Pastor, but they are there. It's so, it really gets me that people got this problem with putting on a mask to stay safe or keeping others safe. But they don't have a problem of those masks that they have in their hearts and in their souls and in their minds that they have to come against the people of God. It's tight, but it's right. They are designed to cover up their evil intentions. Yeah. Be rest assured that God can see all the evil hidden behind those invisible masks. Am I right about it? Yeah. They are visible again, Pastor, uh -huh. and then there are invisible. Uh -huh. Am I right about it, y'all? For God will always know the hearts and minds of all mankind. Yeah. Am I right about it? What's hidden behind your man? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's hidden oh, yes. behind your man? Your mm -hmm. By hating another person, you may become a liar well. or a fool. Well. If you try to conceal your hatred, you end up lying to yourself. No, no, no. If you slander people and are proven wrong, you are a fool. The only way out of your mass of deceptions is to admit your hateful feelings to God. Yes. Ask him to change your heart yes. and to help you to be to love instead of hate. Say goodbye to all masks uh, of yeah, yeah. deception. Yeah. Be advised, God is exposing a lot of masks of deception oh, that has been covered up for centuries. Like Luke 8, 7 says, for nothing hid that shall not be known and come to light. Do what is right in God's sight to everyone, no matter what evilness tries to persuade you to do. You ought to do what's right. See, the Bible tells us to follow Jesus in his word. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You ought to follow God's word. It doesn't matter if they your husband, your wife, your children, your auntie, your cousin, your best friend from long, long time ago. Yeah. You ought to do what God says do. Yes. Because it's his word that will ultimately make us free. I want you to know that God and will, is in control and he always will be in control. No matter how long it takes, righteousness will always prevail over unrighteousness. See, a lot of people think that they are on their way to heaven anyhow. But when one day, when God opened up the book, where will your name be? Will you find your name? In the Lamb Book of Life, it's a whole lot of people that went and thought that they was going to get into heaven, and they didn't get in. Ain't no need in thinking that when you get up there with God that you going to be able to negotiate your spot. You either, when you leave here and go before the judgment, either you're going to heaven or to hell. 
mass of deception will always come back to destroy and expose you. Now open up your Bibles and let's go to Isaiah 59, 1 through 11. Let me tell you about how God will let you know a lot of folk that come to church come for false worship. You ought to know if you come to church to worship God truthfully or falsely. Because only what you do for Christ will last anyhow. It says shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it. I will tell you why. I respond, it's because you are fasting to please yourself. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions a penance, how bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. Yeah. You dress in burlaps and cover yourselves with ashes. Yeah. In this, what you call fasting, yeah. do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want free those who are wrongly in prison. This is what God said. He says, free those who are wrongly in prison. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like a dam and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. It's a lot of people right now just don't want to do what thus saith the Lord. You, you give up that food you fast and you pray. You say, God, take away this pandemic. God, don't let us get sick or my family get sick. But all along behind closed doors, somebody call you just for one meal. You know that you got a freezer for or a refrigerator for. Matter of fact, some of us need to give up some of them plates. You don't even want to give them a hot dog. Well, Am I right about it? See, I'm not up here to make friends. I got the best friend in the world. I learned that a long time ago. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yeah. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. Yeah. There's not a friend like him. Am I right about it? Yeah. Mass of deception will come back to destroy and expose you. God will open up the book on us. Trust me. Search yourselves. Allow God to deliver you, Hallelujah. cleanse you, and set you free from mass of deception. See, mass of deception that I said, those masks that are in you, that cover your heart, that cover your soul, that cover your mind, 
that's not of God, they will eventually take control and kill you. Yeah. I often wonder, I say, Lord, why so many people have brain cancer? Why so many people have heart failure? Some of them need a defibrillator. And that defibrillator is the word of God. Yeah. You are not going to be able to fool the almighty God. You may think you fooling him, but you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Ephesians 5, 8 through 11 says, in the past, you were full of darkness, but now you are full of light in the Lord. So live like children who belong to the light. Light brings every kind of goodness, yeah. right living, and truth. Learn what pleases God. Have nothing to do with things of darkness. Yeah. Which are you going to do? Are you going to walk in the light, the beautiful light, or are you going to stay in darkness? See, it's easy to turn your back and say, I don't have any mass of deception. And I want you to know to be careful what you speak. Well, See, I already talked about those little things that's inside our mouth. Uh, they are called cherry bombs. Uh, cherry bombs will get you in trouble yeah. with God. Yeah. I want to tell you about it. Warnings against sin. Listen the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. It is your sins that have cut you off from God. That's the word of God. You can find that in Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. It's your sins that have cut you off with God. Am I right about it? See, Proverbs let you know that righteous people are hopeful, hopeful. They are concerned about the welfare of God's creation. They understand justice, and guess what? They are showered with blessing. But the wicked are fearful, even their kindness is cruel. Don't understand justice, and they cover it up with their violence. Yeah. They don't mind plotting evil, church. Am I right about it? They don't mind plotting evil, church. I want you to know that the God that we serve, his eyes are open all time. He don't sleep or slumber. See, I don't mind telling you about how God changed me. Yes, I had an evil heart. Yes, I had a nasty attitude. Yes, I had that bullying spirit. And Lord, my God, my God, I'm so ashamed of my scheming attitude that I had. Yes, Lord, but what I didn't realize that I was headed for destruction. Lord, Lord, you got the crowd and ask God to remove the mask of deception. You got to ask him to sweep it away. Hallelujah. You got to despise the ungodly, hallelujah, don't be trapped by evil abominations. Yeah. See, we even got Christians, oh, pastor, no. that's being drawn in that foolishness. Uh -huh. They don't want to accept the truth uh -huh. that God is a God of love. God is a God of all people. God didn't make no certain group uh, superior over other groups. Uh, they just can't get with that pastor. Uh, Am I right about it? Uh, they just don't want to get with that Lord. Hallelujah. They better watch out because God is getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hallelujah. Justice will all 
out the word of God. What's going down? The word of God. God wants you to walk a straight road. God wants you to be glad when others succeed. God wants us to love in spite of indifferences. It's all right to not agree, but we must love one another. It's not right to conceal evil in your heart. It's not right, y'all, to do evil to one another because God is not pleased. He said that he won't come back for a church without spine. I tell you right now, you better do an inventory and make sure that you're not covered up with a whole lot of spats. Hallelujah. It's tight, but it's right. See, the gospel is going to convict from the pulpit all over the land. If you're not doing what the word of God says, your quality of life will be real short. Hallelujah. Because see, people always look over the scripture. When God talks about the life that you live, watch out. It's going to come back to haunt you. Hallelujah. Remember when I was coming up, I had this way that I would huff and I would puff and I would look like and sing like that I was going to blow the house down. Lord, behold, that I know one day I was going to have the sweetest, the kindest, the smartest, the most loving, and the most kind his daughter that knew how to hug and pull up and look like she gonna blow the house down. But thank God for Jesus. Just as he delivered me, he delivered her. Hallelujah. It's tight, but it's right. Choose a good reputation over great riches being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. I just want you to know that you have been put on notice that God does not like a mass of deception. Hallelujah. You got to check it out. Read it for yourself. Go back to the word of God. Let me tell you about a story. I'm going to make it short but sweet. Before I move out of this place, I want to let you know about the story of Esau and Jacob. See how the mass of deception happened? His mother concocted. And guess what happened? You know when mama concocts something, she seemed to be able to concoct the worst mess. And it always seems to be able to tell some stuff. I'm talking about those worldly mamas. Am I right about it? Esau and Jacob. Everybody know that Esau was supposed to get the birthright blessing. But we know that Jacob, Esau, and Jacob's mother, she loved Jacob. Yes, she did. So she told Jacob, she said, this is what I'm going to do. You, When it comes time, I'm, I'm making it short, go back and read in between the lines. He said that Jacob said that my brother Esau is full of hair. He's going to know that I'm not Esau. So what mama say? Let's put some on you where it feel like hair. And what ultimate 
exactly happened. That Jacob e Esau was tricked out of his birthright. Jacob was given a blessing by his dad. The mass of deception, church, it had great, great consequences. Anytime you would put two sons against each other, it's a bad thing. It's tight, but it's right. All of those things come from the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. It's tight, but it's right. Lord, deliver us from all mass of deception. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us, God. In the name of Jesus, we want to be just like you are. to be showered with your blessings, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We want to be showered with honesty and love. Seek honesty from the kingdom of God. It's tight, but it's right. Give it up, church. Give it up. Give it up. Because one day, we going to give up the ghost. One day, we're going to leave this place. And I want to hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. It's going to be a shame when you leave here and you go before the judge. And you look at the almighty God. And you think that you got a spot there. And God tells you to depart from him. He never knew you. See, I know without a shadow of a doubt that my name, Antoinette, Deborah, is written in the book, the Lamb's Hallelujah. book of life. Of life. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I pray that the word fall on good grounds and that everyone under the sound of my voice will check their hearts, their minds, their souls, and ask God, to loose them from any mass of deception. They are so deadly. Yes, they are. When you mean them to harm or hurt another person, generally they come back to destroy you. We got the victory. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe somebody that has heard the message really do want to give up all of those evil ways and detestable things that's not pleasing with God. I just want to pray with you. Because I believe that God can do anything. See, I know that if you ask God and you ask him with a true heart, he will do it. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we realize, God, that a life of wickedness will lead straight to hell. But the life of the 
righteous will lead straight to the kingdom of God. Lord, it's hard to remove the mask of deception. Lord, we know that there are some things that we got to give to you. Cast all of our cares unto you. We give them to you, Lord, all of the mass of deception. Loose us, God. Set us free that we may be able to go out, Lord God, and speak to those in the world that they may be loose from their madness of deception. Lord, help your people every way to understand that only what they do for Christ is going to last. Lord, you know the hearts and the minds of man. There's nothing hid under the sun that you don't know. Lord, we pray that you allow us to see beyond people's outer appearance and look at the heart because you are a wonderful God, a mighty God. Yes, you are. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We bow down. We cry out to you, Lord. Loose us in the mighty name of Jesus. For, Lord, we know when you loose us, you set us free. We are free indeed. Thank you, Lord, for allowing your servant, Lord God, to stand behind the pulpit of love. Lord, help me to be an example. Help me, Lord God, to get rid of any mass of deceptions that I may have. Lord, I realize it's, it's good. It's good to know and to say that I myself have had some mass of deceptions. Well, Lord, I can also say when I cried out, when I cried out to you, Jesus, that you came and you cleaned me and you washed me and you made me whiter than snow. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. I love you, people of God. And if there's any that's listening to the sound of my voice that don't know Jesus and realize that they have done wrong and that the walk that they've been walking wasn't the walk of the Almighty God, that they've been walking in the walk of the unrighteous, that they cry out, save me, Jesus. Wash me, cleanse me, help me, God, to do your will, your way. Save my soul. Thank <laughs> you. 
Praise the Lord for that word. Amen. Mass and mass destruction. God bless you, First Lady Minister Roy. Amen. What a word from God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can't hide. You can't run. Amen. She gave the invitation. Amen. So if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, she gave you the instruction. Thank you. Praise God for that word in Jesus' name. Mask of mass deception. Ah, my soul rejoice. Did not our hearts burn, brother? Yes, we Lord. Stop. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yeah. Heard the word. Yeah. Praise him. Yeah. Youth pastor will come now. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yeah. What a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Hallelujah. We had a reader chiming in. This morning, say, preach, Debbie. We got Uncle Nathan and Sister Carl and others who have fellowship with us this morning. We just want to thank you for just tuning in. Thank God for my pastors, our leaders here, First Lady, uh, Minister Debbie Roy, and our pastor, Pastor Roland Fireball Roy. It's always an honor and a pleasure to serve under them. Now y'all see why we're always broadcasting the service here, because there's always fresh bread that comes down from heaven, preacher. And I just thank God for you. Keep on preaching. When they get mad, preach. When they happy, preach. When they say it, preach. God called us to preach, amen? There's the weapon of mass destruction, of mass deception, amen? I thank God. I, I heard a point you talked about Christian ethics. You talked about Christian service. And when your brothers and your sisters hungry and they in need, as a believer, you got to be able to help. Amen? Amen. Talking about Jesus, 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 believe in help. Amen? We might not get help a lot, but we can help out a little bit, Pastor. Those who are watching, I always get requests, I always get phone calls of how can we give? How can we be a blessing to this ministry? Because this ministry has been a blessing to us. Uh, some uh, audio, video, multimedia things that we want you to know, too. We would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sovereign Grace Baptist Church of Atlanta, Maryland. Subscribe to that and you'll see all the events, all the Bible studies, all the preaching. Every service, every event that's going on here at Grace. So we, we beseech you. We, we, we uh, pray that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sovereign Grace Baptist Church of Atlanta, Maryland. And of course, uh, the giving aspect. A lot of my friends, a lot of my family members ask, how can we be a blessing to this ministry? How can we give? We want to sow a, a seed into your ministry. There's our cash app. If you would like to give cash app, I know the younger generation don't give cash anymore, but cash app, S-G-B-C-M-D, dollar sign. Don't forget the dollar sign, dollar sign, S-G-B-C-M-D. You can give that way, or you can send your offering, send your donations, to the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church in Lionel, Maryland, which is 68, our address here, 6832 3rd Street, Lionel, Maryland, 20706. Anytime you have any questions concerning the matter, you can always go to the video. The video always has a, 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 a description at the bottom of how you can give cash out wise, how can you give donation wise. Don't just send us an offering and a gift, but we want to hear prayer requests. Send us your prayer requests. Send us letters letting us know how much of a blessing this ministry has been to you. And some of the things that we can do to enhance ministry, amen? We want to know, we want to get some ideas too. We, we like to see what you like streaming. We like to see what you like hearing. We just thank God for you just tuning in with us. And we pray God continue to bless you as you seek to uh, change a generation for Jesus. And as we say every week, Pastor, there's the Batman from the 1960s. I know a lot of people, that's not, that's, I didn't, I didn't rip that off. Just, I know Adam West is gone now. And I know Paramount might have uh, the copyrights to it, but I'm stealing it from Paramount. Don't tell Paramount, y'all. Uh, but you can join us next week. Uh, the treat will be me, amen? God will use me next week. And if it be the Lord's will, we'll be talking about John chapter 17 concerning Jesus' prayer for us. Uh, same bad time, same bad station. Tune in. Facebook, Corey Whitaker. 
Tune in. Why was I about to say Instagram? I'm sorry. Tune in. Uh, YouTube. Sovereign Grace Baptist Church of Atlanta, Maryland. 11.30 a.m. Every Sunday morning. Be there. Come along.